Ladies and gentlemen, the Mars on Earth conference is about to begin. I'm here with your co-host, Ms. Saddle. Leaders of countries, experts in various fields, science, technology, research and design, engineering, space exploration and policy making have all gathered here tonight to establish and further the common understanding and further develop the mankind's next vision to reach Mars. Together, we will bridge mankind's vision to reach Mars. Mars, Mars for, for everyone! everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mars and Earth International Digital Conference. To everyone around the world tuning in, Happy New Year. 1st of January, very first day of the year. Everyone sets a new goal and they have full of enthusiasm. So this special day, Mars V team is ready to bring a new hope and new dream to all humankind. With the mission to connect Mankind's vision to reach Mars, the Mars on Earth conference is ready to begin. We have compiled a very unique agenda comprising of numerous Mars and space research specialists and more. We have some incredible people joining us today, such as Dr. Robert Zubrin, one of the first individuals to promote Mars research and exploration. The man himself who put the idea of Mars in some of the brightest minds in the world such as Elon Musk and Elissa Carson, officially announced by NASA to become the first human to set foot on the red planet. Other individuals such as Yannicka Mikkelsen and Gavin Gillet, who are advocating to revolutionize the mining industry, setting it into space to further decrease our resource depletion right here on Earth. And foreign ambassadors to Mongolia, international and national leaders, also going to participate in our conference. Starting from mankind's vision to reach Mars to the Mars generation and finally digital transition and beyond. Without further ado, I am pleased to invite Mr. Irtenbold Suchpater, founder of Mars V Project. Happy New Year to all around the globe who are joining our international conference. Ladies and gentlemen, the creation of artificial intelligence and space technology has massively increased the development of the human race. Faced with the currently growing issues of resource depletion, we can look towards to the use of technology and innovation to solve issues of water, food, and energy. With the discovery of groundbreaking tech and scientific discoveries, the age of space has opened up to the world more than ever before. Pathing to global cooperation and the glaring opportunity of global prosperity. With the ambition to join this effort of development, the Mongolian Aerospace Research and Science Association has been established to connect mankind's vision to reach Mars. The Mongolian Gobi Desert is a treasure that is unique. With its various environments and distinctive location, it is Mars on Earth. With using this resource, the process of space and Mars exploration can be accelerated. While Mongolia has existed without rich historical roots to the world, the Mars V project is an opportunity to once again lay the basis for the future. And we are giving Mars V project to the world to open up new possibilities for cooperation and growth. The participation of President of Mongolia and the government of Mongolia, the leading specialist on space and Mars exploration, astronauts, who will write history, representatives of public and private organizations who are joining us to share their knowledge for the progress of man must be commanded. The Mars on Earth 
conference is a small example of global cooperation to further the progress of space exploration and research. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce the launch of the Mars on Earth International Virtual Conference. Now, you know the most amazing part about space activities and research is that when it comes to space research, exactly, you're always participating in international cooperation. Especially nowadays. <laughs> Especially nowadays. And with that being said, when most space actors are participating in space activities and research, whether it's on the state level or the private level, they're always in multilateral cooperation. Yeah, and uh, speaking of state levels, we are very happy that the president of Mongolia, Hatmagin Batulak, is eagerly supporting the Mars V project. And he actually went to the Gobi with uh, Mars V members to be introduced to the location where the analog stations are to be built. Yeah, and not only that, the Mongolian president himself has introduced the Mars V project to numerous state leaders from US, Russia, and India, which Such just an honor. exactly, which just goes to show the amount of support the state is showing us to this amazing project. And uh, by the way, uh, we, while we were at the Gobi with the president, we made a video. Shall we check it out? So let's take a look. All right. Mars Gargi, Hundur Lukhtung, Yitzum Shik, Husul Timutin Dor, Shinjil Huang, Tegni Tegnil Hutsu, Imtagui, Bagel, Ichtil Higan, Hatrach, Harutsu. Hamarchisu bit Puhunurge Biluja Ulto Hasuktuch Zondan Nimktuchur Tilhalte Irstis Nuxin Mongolian Goy Urmuts Uchurbitulu Motsli Giver Hatrasar in Savita Zontojana Archilog Hagintolog Puh Soydi Nuxin Olongot Motsot Sotlitz de Hulen Ich Goyin Hanikta Arsabai The video looks so amazing. I thought it was filmed in studio. No, what can I say? That is Mars. That is the Gobi. It's such a unique treasure that the world holds, you know. That's why we're saying it's one of the best places to prepare for Mars exploration and essential researches. Yeah, as you said, we have a great resource of landscape and climate, but resources without any future plan Definitely. and strategy is nothing. When you're trying to progress into the future towards success, Planning, planning, planning is always the best way. And without further ado, I want to invite Chief Cabinet Secretary Lofsanam Sang Ayurden to the stage. Mongolia's Sir Hill Ching Yeltar, Mongolia's Sin Sing Hatzer, Mongolia's Han Sin Sotla, who chose to enter the Hamtrans Kambavacho, the Hitler Mars Poyo, Mars on the Earth, Otto Sin Sakam Hortig, the King Otto Arnas Hutus and the Hutchbo Tab and the Inu Tring, Mindik, Burgia. Moment of stick. Sanaslech, Mongolian Sansering, Sotla, Hujusting, Twin Tirgong, Ikum Hurirton of Tony Nuktut, Chins Clit Tataka Litrikia. Hernukur Zombo, Tundur Hortnit, Hintog Irinson, Himit Loyo Honey Hochel, Sansering Tintogging Uyama. Mongol was seen hold to Mursung Washington to Dunich, Shin Washington to Tatarhas and Asiara Hurt, Botlin Berenchik, Mongol was seen Hortas Battle Chirichuch Bera. Hoyman Hornig Ombos, Injiting Botla Hirichi Hangin, Hni, Jitim. Mongol was taking Hochling, Retun Chikantl Nitsang, Asiara Tabotli, Hirutin told, Sansering to Hintog Sursung, Shin Karani, Campanot, Sansering I judged in Zavostel, Sansering Hochutel, Katati Osornot, the Hamtrang, Himil Tabot Hog, Hurungorotin, Hamti Achlak, Puchlar, Tinging Achlak, Bilimbara, Hitler Hills Bena. Mars to Slint, who are not drinking in Horst, Mongol Sin, Sansering Botlock, Hochutin to Hunt, Onslagnig, Chocolate Wood, Bottom Wooded Bena, get it till Teben. Sansarin Botlock Sash, Dotton Burgund Green Hooching, Rule to Schulz, Mongol Sinner, his heading, Niriumus Bottom, Sansarin, Mutsnikums in Dario Tab Hunde, Achli and Chilsia. You know, it's amazing how much support the Mars V project is getting nationally and internationally. And to be honest, I'm so happy to be part of this project. Me too, me too. I'm so happy too because. I met so many amazing people during exactly. the preparation of the conference and one of those people is ambassador of India to Mongolia. So ladies and gentlemen, it is our privilege to invite Mr. MP Singh. Sanbeno, good afternoon, namaskar. 
It is indeed a pleasure for me to be joining you all virtually for this prestigious event organized by MARSA. My warmest felicitations and greetings to the energetic team of MARSA, ably led by my friend Eden Bold. I have had the pleasure of personally interacting with most members, and I can say that their perseverance, patience, persistence, and enormous energy level inspire me to no end. Their genuine enthusiasm and keen eagerness to develop and promote the use of space science for betterment of Mongolian nation and its wonderful people is simply commendable. Uh, announcement of the Indian government to allow Indian private players and startups in Indian space sectors encouraged uh, a group of young researchers from Mars who also accompanied President Batulga for his state visit to India in September 2019 to open negotiations with the Indian space scientists at the world-renowned ISRO or called Indian Space Research Organization, a premier uh, uh, agency for manufacture, service provider and technology developer in the, the space sector. I'm sure that efforts of the Mars team would be ably complemented by about 225 Mongolian space scientists, professionals who have been trained in ISRO during the last two decades, and half of which are women. The program content of this conference reflects the commitment and desire of young Mongolian researchers to engage with the global experts in consolidating the gains made so far by their organization, Mars, in the space sector, and to carry forward their favorite mission, Mars on Earth Project in Gobi. Mars on Earth International Digital Conference. Mars V. Mankind's vision to reach Mars. You know, our current era of space exploration, our space era, will be defined by whether we get to the red planet or not. It will be our next giant leap. And uh, you might ask, why go to Mars? What is the purpose of Mars exploration? Well, we're going to need a lot more time. But in short, if you know, in the sense from movies and uh, predictions, if humans want to become a multi-planetary species, obviously Mars is the next step. And Dr. Robert Zubrin, president and founder of Mars Society, has helped build uh, several analog stations throughout the world, which receives analog trainees every year. And not only that, Dr. Zubrin is one of the first people on Earth to advocate for man to go to Mars. Joining us from Colorado, USA, Dr. Robert Zubrin. Hello, I'm Robert Zubrin. I'm president of the Mars Society. But we need to learn how we're going to explore Mars. And the best way to do it is on Earth. Um, there are places on Earth where we can practice exploring Mars and figure out what's going to work and what isn't. Now, some people say, well, we need to do that on the moon. Well, if we go to the moon before we go to Mars, we can do that on the moon too. But we can do it on Earth right now. And even if we were on the moon, we could do this on Earth at, you know, one thousandth the cost or less. So we're going to get a lot more practice for Mars missions in on Earth. And it is for this reason that the Mars Society has built two stations, one in the Canadian Arctic and one in the American desert. Uh, we call them Mars Analog Research Stations, where we can practice Mars missions. And people who have uh, gone through our program have gone on to establish additional stations in Hawaii and Israel and Poland and elsewhere. And, uh, and it would be really great to have one in the Mongolian desert too. Now, what, what can we do at these stations? We can take a group of people and task them to conduct a sustained, sustained program of field exploration in geology, in microbiology, in paleontology. Okay, the same things they would be doing on Mars and doing them under as many Mars mission constraints as we can impose on them. And by so doing, we learn what's going to work on Mars and what isn't, what technologies would be useful to the crew, what forms of organization of the mission are best. Great, great talk. And Mars is really next step progress. And it's very important to prepare before landing on Mars. Yeah, definitely. Preparation is everything when it comes to space exploration. And you know, um, analogs are being built actually all around the world. 
to provide the best type of experience and training for survivability and adaptation all around the world. Therefore, we are going to invite astronaut instructor at European Space Center, Mr. Pierre Emmanuel from Belgium. Bonjour, je m'appelle Pierre Emmanuel Poulis et je suis instructeur à l'Eurospace Center en Belgique, mais également le président de la Mars Society Belgium. Et euh, nous avons euh, conçu à l'Eurospace Center le premier village martien en Europe. C'est une base indoor dans notre grand hall d'entraînement et ce qui permet aux visiteurs, mais également aux enfants, les classes de l'espace qui viennent suivre un entraînement d'astronautes pendant plusieurs jours et aux stagiaires pendant les vacances, des enfants également ou des jeunes qui viennent également suivre ce même type d'entraînement, ça permet de tout savoir sur la planète Mars. Alors nous avons décidé de composer ce village martien en quatre modules. Quatre modules, quatre thèmes, quatre thèmes différents. Dans chacun de ces modules, eh bien, le visiteur pourra, à l'aide d'écrans tactiles et interactifs, tout savoir sur les différents thèmes. Le premier module et le premier thème est consacré au voyage vers Mars, qui va durer en principe à peu près six mois. Qu'est-ce qu'un équipage va faire dans l'espace pendant six mois, le temps d'atteindre la planète rouge Psychologiquement, ça ne va pas être facile du tout, et il va avoir beaucoup de travail, c'est très important, pour qu'il soit occupé pendant ces six mois de voyage. Ça correspond à peu près, évidemment, à une mission comme si on était à bord de la Station Spatiale Internationale. Il va effectuer, cet équipage, des tas d'expériences scientifiques, etc., etc. Mais l'important, évidemment, ce sera de partir au bon moment. On aborde dans ce premier module également l'importance de la fenêtre de lancement. Il s'agit d'envoyer un équipage en orbite autour du Soleil, puisqu'il faut rattraper la planète Mars. C'est un vol balistique, on ne peut pas changer de trajectoire en cours de route, et donc on parle de tout cela. L'importance donc du bon moment pour, pour partir vers Mars, puisqu'il n'y a une fenêtre de lancement en fait qu'à peu près tous les deux ans. Dans ce module, nous avons également un écran qui nous donne en direct la distance qui nous sépare de la planète Mars. Pour le moment, la Terre est en train de s'éloigner de Mars et donc on voit les kilomètres qui défilent, la distance qui augmente en direct entre les deux planètes, euh, la Terre et Mars. So, it's really important to have extensive preparations when we're going to Mars. And analogs play a big role. Yeah, not only that, they're also being built all around the world today and right now. But when it comes to the Gobi, we're saying it's very Mars-like, and it is, definitely is, temperature, environment. But there are other, many, many aerospace researchers that can be done on the Gobi Desert. Definitely, such as material science experiments, and more specifically, the stratospheric balloon experiment that Dr. Hiroaki Akiyama from Japan does. And he's the first ever international advisor of the Mars V project. And he's here with us right now. So let's give our attention to Dr. Akiyama on the potential of the Gobi Desert. Uh, stratosphere is, stratosphere has uh, very low degrees, and very low temperatures, and very low uh, pressures. But uh, it's, be, uh, it's the same situation uh, of uh, March and skies. So, uh, maybe you know the surface of the March uh, The degree is about minus 30 or minus 50 degrees. And the surface of the March and uh, March atmospheres, uh, uh, March and ground uh, pressures is about 10 hectopascals. So, uh, if you make uh, some airplane or drones for uh, uh, for Earth's uh, surface, maybe this uh, airplane or drone can be flight uh, on the Mars and skies. It's very interesting. Uh, of course, I know uh, your members uh, just now they want to make the uh, simulation site of the Mars and ground, but uh, uh, your country. Uh, has another another good simulation site uh, of uh, much as skies. Bye bye. See you soon too, Dr. Akiyama. He is a good friend of ours, and he already visited Mongolia's Gobi several times to conduct his stratospheric balloon experiment. Mm.
Speaking of Gobi, our next speaker will talk about Gobi and Mongolian history in the space industry. She will give you a basic understanding of Mars research. And it is my pleasure to invite Professor of Physics and Astronomy at the National University of Mongolia, Dr. Rinchigin Tsozmong. Today I am very honored to share with you on topic why Mongolia and all countries should support Mars study. For the research, so also we also doing some research using uh, rovers data and also ro remote sensing data, how Mongolian desert to, to be similar to Mars surface. So uh, Perseverance, I want to also share Perseverance also uh, will, will uh, land on this place because this place always was interesting for uh, Mongolians because it is 3.5 billion years ago there was life. So now there's such places in Mongolian Gobi, you can see it, you can find it. Uh, there is similar place, Mongolian Plateau and Tarsis on Mars. There are similarity because uh, in this uh, scientific research, I below I mentioned this, in this scientific paper, they prove, they uh, made analysis, uh, exactly comparative studies of the Mongolian Plateau and Tarsis uh, provide excellent opportunities for understanding surface manifestations, uh, some groundwater uh, process. So it also uh, tells us uh, the Mongolian Gobi will be more and more uh, similarities uh, with Mars studies. So Mars will allow us, it's exciting gateway into astrophysics, astrochemistry, astrobiology, astromathematics, and also astroelectronics, optics, information technology. Thank you for your attention. Amazing speech and presentations. And I didn't know there was a planet named Mazala and Van Rouge, and that was amazing. So now, panel discussion of first part of our Mars on Earth International Conference is ready to start. Joining the panel is the establishment team leader and CEO of Mongolian Green Finance Corporation and Mars V Team's honorary advisor, Mr. Boldo Magvan and the senior lawyer at Dacheng Dentos International Law Firm and Satellite CD Projects Director at Marsville Project, Mr. Buttergill Turbold. It is my privilege to invite these distinguished guests onto the stage. What is the importance of Mongolia's contribution to Mars and space exploration? What is our value proposition? And last but not least, how can we all benefit from this? This Mars V project in Mongolia, mm -hmm. uh, initiated by Mongolian youth, uh, highly committed to contribute to the global mission. So it's, pro it's an initiative which comes from uh, bottom mm -hmm. to up. That's why it's so important. There is a huge desire and contribute to this mission. So that's the first value I think Mars V project can bring into the global mission. Extreme climate in Mongolia, mm -hmm. below and above zero, 80 or 90 degrees difference. Right. Extreme climate can be a, exper an experimental mm -hmm. platform for research and study in order to reach Mars. And I think another value we can, Mongolians can bring into this global mission is that agility of Mongolian people. Mm -hmm. I think right. that's, that's the skill. Agile skill could be useful mm -hmm. for the astronauts. Right. Astronauts. And the mission to Mars. Yeah who are going to Mars. Mars and Earth International Digital Conference, Mars V. 
In your opinion, what are the competitive advantages of Mongolia in the space industry? Mongolia's uh, uh, long-standing uh, position of a neutral, politically neutral right. uh, country for everyone. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we don't have like uh, enemies, mm -hmm. we don't have any terrorist attacks or any turmoils. Uh, we are a very peaceful, calm country mm -hmm. to host this uh, magnificent project and uh, it's a safe place for all par participating bodies to place here and we're not antagonizing with any uh, countries in the mm -hmm. world so we are open to everyone to come here so on the other hand it's also a great opportunity to uh, test uh, uh, let's say uh, Mars constitution in Mongolia mm -hmm. because we're going to send these men and women to Mars who are risking their lives for humankind mm -hmm. and we shall not jeopardize their lives and their efforts definitely uh, for say some national or local conflicts they shouldn't right. affect those who are on the way to Mars with reaching Mars right around the corner a large number of aspiring youth have dedicated their lives to Mars exploration for the potential to go there in the future. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to invite Elisa Carson. Are you ready to meet Elisa Carson? I hope you are. And she is the first person to land on Mars. So let's check it out. So a little bit about what's actually going on right now in the space industry and kind of the hopes for the future. So looking right now, the plans or the current plans really are to go back to the moon sometime in the 2020s and then on to Mars in the 2030s. So that is kind of the time frame that we're hoping for. Um, there's a brand new rocket, the SLS Space Launch System and Orion Capsule. Both of those are going to be new to the space industry um, once they are fully built and prepared and ready for humans to take flight. Um, and those are going to be the components that are going to get us to Mars for the first time. So that's all really exciting. There's a whole lot of science to be done in terms of Mars and also going back to the moon. Um, going back to the moon is really going to be a lot of just testing and learning about the new rocket, how it works, is it safe for people, is it um, capable of even bringing us to the moon. If it can't get us to the moon then it most likely can't bring us to Mars. So that's really going to be the whole point of the Artemis program which we will start seeing more development in the next coming years. Um, but really the grand scheme of things for a mission to Mars is that we would have um, this brand new rocket bring us to Mars which should take around six months or so and then once the astronauts are actually on Mars they'll spend around a year there doing all sorts of science research um, all of the typical things you would picture an astronaut doing uh, on the red planet they're working in the space industry or achieving whatever your dreams may be hmm. that was great talk by the way how long has Elisa been in astronaut training I believe she has been in astronaut training since she was 13. Mm, so proud of her. Yeah, me too. I believe there are lots of boys and girls today watching us who dream of becoming an astronaut one day. And I'm really interested to know how the astronaut training, the astronaut selection processes go. Me too. And to answer exactly that question, we are going to invite an astronaut trainee who works with the European Space Agency, Camille Fournier, joining us from France. Bienvenue. To be an astronaut, you need to have a good view, 10 on 10. Have a good psychology and way of thinking. Be attentive and able to concentrate it in any situation without ever being overwhelmed by emotions. Possess a very solid academic record. Have the appropriate age. Have a minimum of a master's degrees in science or one thousands hours of piloting experiences and to verify its condition there at the time of the selection by the space agencies the candidates are subjected to various tests psychological test logical test physical test and i forgot some for sure because the selection can last up for one year you know, it's absolutely inspiring to see the amount of work and dedication put in by the Mars generation to their preparations for future Mars missions. 
It's astonishing. And that dedication is shown by our next speaker, Linda Raimondo. As part of her astronaut training, she spent a prolonged period of time in a cave, just like what Camille is trying to do. Just imagine yourself living in a cave in that closed space. I can't, so let's check it out. All right. Human's psychology is probably the most complex and mysterious thing on Earth. We cannot predict in any way how it can react during, during dangerous events. And even if astronauts are super, super well trained, they will always remain human beings. So sending humans to Mars means that those persons will have to live for many months in a closed environment with always the same mates who are also part of the crew. And if they become homesick or heartsick in that case, they cannot just look out of the window and see a blue sky or a red sunset. They cannot go out and breathe deeply. They are obliged to remain in that closed space without the chance to go back home. And we don't know how a human mind can react in such a stressful and hard environment. Yo, astronaut training does seem like a lot to take in at first glance. Now, Linda actually speaks five languages and she's a public speaker. These girls are so incredible, they will definitely be the f face of future Mars exploration. I can't argue with that. So, this is marking the end of the second part of the conference. So, you know what? Let's head back down to the stage. Let's do it. Mars on Earth International Digital Conference. Mars V. Тэгэхээр энэ Марс төсөл маань 
шинжлүү ухааны аялал жуулчлалыг одоо төшгөлсөн тусгаар сонирхлын аялал жуулчлалын төрөл хэлбэрүүдийг говийн бүсийн бүс нутагт одоо чиглүүлэх татах ийм одоо ач холбогдолтой одоо төсөл болж харагдаж байгаа. Тэгэхээр энэ бол одоо Монгол улсын засгийн газрын аялал жуулчлалын салбарт баримтлах дунд олон урт хугацааны бодлого шууд одоо бүрэн уйлдаж байгаа гэж ингэж үзэж байгаа. За нөгөө төгрөгийн төслийг хэрэгжүүлэх явцад бол бас төсөл маань өөрөө том бүтэн байгуултад суурилалгүй те яг одоо байгаль орчны одоо өнөөгийн байдлыг бүрэн хадгалах цаашдаа урт хугацаанда сөрөг нөлөөгүй байх а тухайн байгаль орчонд одоо бас байгаль орчны нуур амьсгалын өөрчлөлтийг судлах энэ ажлуудыг цогцоор энэ төсөл маань зөвхөн аялжуулчлал биш те шинжлэх ухааны судалгаатай хамтаар ингэж хийх нөхцөлийг бүрдүүлж байгаа гэдгээр одоо төслөөс байгаль орчонд үзүүлэх сөрөг нөлөөлөл а тухайн одоо говийн бүс нутагт байгаа тэр байгалийн одоо биеийн байдлыг цаашдаа урт хугацаанда бид нэр алдагдуулахгүй байх нөхцөлийг бас хангаж байгаа. Тэгэхээр аялжуулчлалын томоохон төслүүдэд гардаг одоо алдааг энэ төсөл давтгүй ахад анхнаас анхаарч байгаа гэдгээр бас засгийн газрын одоо бүрэн дэмжлэгийг авч байгаа гэж ингэж ойлгож болно. За энэ марс төсөл бол одоо яг харах гомоо засгийн газраас барьж байгаа боллоо. Яамнаас барьж байгаа боллохтой бас нийтэлж байгаа юм слагна. За ер нь тусгай амлалтай газар дээр байгаль орчондоо ээлтэй а тэр тэнд амьдарч байгаа хар дэргэдтэй бас тий. Одоо хөөчтөө ийм тал дээр бас төрийн бодлого бол явж байгаа. Цаашдаа бид нар Монгол улсын тусгай амлалтай газар дээр энэ аялжуулсан чиглэлээр бол том том одоо төсөл сонгон чадруулах замаар одоо яа жишээлбэл би марс төслийг бол онцлоод байна л. Энэ замаар одоо газар ашиглуулах энэ тал руугаа одоо бодлого юм наа гэж бидэнд ойлгох гэж болно. Mars and Earth International Digital Conference Mars V Digital transition and beyond you know technology is such an amazing thing using technology and implementing it into everyday life humankind is progressing at a pace that is so fast absolutely progress is the key to moving forward space technologies are already developing uh private sectors in so many ways for instance uh remote sensing technologies and uh in situ utilization projects are fundamentally changing the concept of mining with that being said individuals such as Gavin Gillay is advocating that mining industry should focus on space so let's focus our attention to the member of Rio Tinto and Chamber of American Commerce National Space Committee Gavin Gillay Hi there, my name is Gavin from Rio Tinto in Queensland, Australia. As part of this presentation, I'd like to speak to you about uh an introduction to mining in space. And this goes for the moon, asteroids, or Mars, or even further out into the solar system as it makes sense. But uh starting with that, the most important things from a short-term perspective are that the space industry is probably the only place in which we're fundamentally challenging the way we view mining. They are coming at mining from a completely different angle uh with completely new challenges and and they need to invent uh brand new processes, technologies and systems in which to uh address those challenges. Uh my role is to find those particular uh solutions and see where they might benefit the mining industry that we have on earth today. To thrive in space, we need to learn how to live off the land. And this is where Mongolia can play a key role in the future. The space industry calls this uh in situ resource utilization. The plan is to send autonomous machines ahead of people to find and extract resources and then build the structures required for human habitation so we no longer need to bring everything from earth to survive definitely enjoyable and you know a lot of our private sectors can also in the future potentially shift towards space space industry is a not new topic in mongolia and we have abundant history in the space industry Definitely. Mongolia is deeply rooted in the histories of aerospace research. We have an astronaut who's been to space, and with that, from 1960s and on, Mongolia has participated in international legislation of space law itself. 
Not only Mongolia. Since 2000, many countries have been using information technology as a trigger to develop society. Therefore, we are going to invite Ms. Bolaritn Batsingal, Chairwoman of Communication and Information Technology Authority of Mongolia. Um, so, w the government of Mongolia is planning several activities regarding space development. The first one is to pass national space legislation in Mongolia. As I mentioned, we joined many international agreements. Um, second one is threatening international cooperation and human resource capacity. So as I emphasized before, uh, Mongolia has had very good uh, cooperations with other international organizations. So in the next few years, what we will be focusing on is um, educating our young people in space field and collaborating, cooperating regarding human resource. The third one is support public-private partnership in this field, of course. Um, so, also, we would like to ask for other organizations to join in um, for developing the um, space field, space development. I have to say that Mars is one of the biggest projects that we have had so far. Um, the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Initiative in the space field, the government will be supporting these initiatives and B2B model in the space activities. Thank you so much for your attention. Mongolia and space activities are intertwined. So, in this sense, we have to keep on this effort. The world is aiming towards space for the sake of sustainability and the improvement of all humankind. And with that, we have founder and CEO of Helium 3 Power and the member of the Norway Space Agency, Janneke Mikkelsen. Hello everyone, hello Mars A and hello Mars B. Mongolians have always been at the forefront of space exploration. Back in 1967, two years before 11, Apollo 11 launched and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first humans to walk on the moon, Mongolia signed the Outer Space Treaty. The most important paragraph of the Outer Space Treaty defines that all nations shall carry out activities in the exploration and use of outer space in the interest of maintaining international peace and promoting international cooperation and understanding. Mongolians are now in a unique position to lead the way for nations to achieve international cooperation in United Space Exploration. Project Mars A and Mars V will bring the world together and unite us towards one goal, to achieve human spaceflight to a neighboring planet, Mars. Thank you so much. Well, as Janneke just mentioned again and again, cooperation in space activity has to be key. And revolution, industrial revolution, especially the fourth age of industrial revolution, is here and happening right now, which is opening gateways to the future. There are also concept of digital transformation caused by fourth industrial revolution. Therefore, we are going to invite Mr. Jarosehan Dor, CEO of Young Research Supporting Foundation in Mongolia. And the severe environment to force humans to make inventions that would enable them to survive and knowledge will remain to be the main and the only tool to address countless challenges faced by humankind. And what is the necessity of that is causing digital transformation? And digital transformation is a logical consequence that is caused by the fourth industrial revolution. And also digital transformation is also an opportunity. To me, digital transformation is not the ultimate goal. It is a process of transformation enabling to build knowledge in timely and accurate manner. Many of us mistakenly tend to think that knowledge building is very complex and a costly process. In reality, knowledge doesn't have to be rocket science. And disruptive technologies dealing with the data generating, processing and transmitting are helpful in building knowledge. That's not enough for building good quality knowledge. The, the missing part is our thinking style. 
And uh, last year, we conducted a brief research aimed at learning about the uh, differences between prevailing mindset of Mongols uh, as a nomads and the system uh, thinking. And the finding surprised us. As we see here, there is a tremendous potential of making our thinking not only disciplined uh, uh, and uh, systemized, but also creative ones. And the fourth industrial revolution brought so many challenges as well. And one of the biggest challenges, our mindset dominated by legacy paradigms. And it's clear to me that our thinking style, which has brought so many wonderful innovations and progress to us, needs to be changed in order to stay able to digest and to handle properly huge data and generate the much needed knowledge. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for being with us. This is the last panel discussion of our conference. We just got very interesting speeches about uh, space mining, the fourth industrial revolution, digital transformation, and Mongolia's activity and policy in the information technology sector. Now, we invite some distinguished guests to discuss how we can make remarkable contribution to the space industry and what solutions we can offer. Please welcome His Excellency, Ambassador Extraordinary and Planning Potential of India, to Mongolia, Mr. Mohinder Pratap Singh. And His Excellency, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of United States of America to Mongolia, Mr. Michael Kocheski. And Mr. Patnerent Lotunshar, the Vice Minister of Mining and Heavy Industry. And Mr. Ganzorik Ulzibair, Economist and the Chairman of Board of Directors at Mandl Insurance. There are many people may wonder that how a country of only 3.5 million people can carry out the giant project like Mars V. So what will answer, how will you answer this question? Because you wrote, you launched a very successful book, Psychology of Management. So based on your managemental psychology, how would you answer that question? Well, I think uh, yesterday's giant project is today's common project, you know. So I think giant is really in our psychology, it's our perception. It's not really a giant project because, you know, we can support it. As long as we have the right environment mm -hmm. from geographic perspective and from a legal and human capacity perspective in order to support such a project. So I think it's a, it's a very, very suitable but often overlooked place that is Mongolia. In our Mars V project, we also talk a lot about um, survival skill and adaptive skill of Mongolians. So what is the special um, expertise for nomadic people and what is their advantage and specialty? I believe it's very interesting mix and your question addresses that challenge spot on. Because Mongolia is a perfect place. Why? To discover and to colonize, to make a home, an alien planet, you have those specific behaviors and specific adaptable capacities, psychologically prepared, mm -hmm. as an astronaut, as a colonist. Mm -hmm. So in the world, there's no culture that can mimic that the best, and that is the nomadic culture. We Mongolians, as nomadics, we always adapt to some of the harshest climates on the earth. And we truly adapt to what nature demands us to be. And that really comes from this mindset, mindset of being flexible, and be prepared to any challenge and become a strategist. I think Mongolian Gobi Desert and combined with uh, witnessing the nomadic lifestyle can be an excellent psychological training ground for those future astronauts who are opting to fly the next rocket to the, to the Mars.
Mars and Earth International Digital Conference, Mars V. So therefore, why and how those countries which are not familiar with the space industry contribute to the space exploration, in your opinion? That they need to collaborate. They need to have exchange, uh, information exchange, sharing mechanism. They could sign MOUs, uh, uh, they, could, they could have training for many of the young people here and have an institutional linkage uh, and uh, with, with, with the nations that have, uh, that have stronger capabilities. And as you know, India is uh, uh, now one of the top four nations in space area. We started this uh, several years ago, but we very much feel uh, that uh, we could, uh, we, could, we could support uh, upcoming nations. With Mongolia, we have a strategic partnership. So I'm sure that within the framework of that, we could uh, develop the how uh, part of uh, developing the Mongolian space program. I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, we could synergize uh, uh, our, uh, our efforts and try and support uh, Mongolia uh, within the framework of the space agreement that was signed last year and help them make, uh, make, make uh, further progress in the mission. Thank you for coming in here. No, it is such a and pleasure. Are, yeah. And uh, I thank you on the contrary for inviting me. Mars and Earth International Digital Conference, Mars V. How can we transform Mongolia's mining-based development model mm -hmm. into technology-based growth policy? And what will be the benefit or importance of developing a technology-based economy? Today, Mongolia is heavily, as you said, uh, dependent on mining resources. Mm -hmm. And that's where a quarter of our state budget comes from. That's where 90% of the export come from. And uh, how can we bring that uh, wealth generated from one specific industry into uh, industries where we have most potential? Uh, I think one of the keys is to, uh, to build, to actually to establish that sovereign development fund. That sovereign development fund that we aiming to build actually can enable uh, that mechanism flowing, you know, the revenue generated from mining into um, other, you know, uh, other industries where we can use that market creating innovation and technological advancement to enable uh, products and services that are not accessible to majority of the population. I want to ask now about Marsvi. Uh, so Marsvi project is also very special. We also offer something special for analog mission. So you visited at Mars V office earlier and so you know the basics about the project. So uh, what's your opinion about the potential of the Mars V project? I mean, I think it's a, a really interesting possibility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was very, very interesting to visit the offices. One of the many things that really uh, impressed me about it was the enthusiasm of everybody who was there and the knowledge base of everyone who was there. Uh, some of them have studied abroad, some of them have uh, focused their studies in, in Mongolia, but they all uh, seem not only highly committed, but uh, highly excited mm -hmm. and also very knowledgeable about various aspects of this mission. So I think the possibilities are, are very interesting. There has to be different ways, I think, of, uh, of preparing for, uh, for humans to be on, on Mars. And this is one way to do it that uh, offers some interesting possibilities. I think one of the exciting things about Mars V and generally about uh, focusing on space exploration is it, it not only gives uh, a country the ability to contribute to an international effort like uh, going to Mars, but it, you know, it really encourages people to study things like STEM education fields. I think that's tremendously important uh, because it benefits the country and it benefits the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust you're enjoying the Mars on Earth. Thanks to the great minds, thought leaders of the world, commendable individuals with passion and whom are striving to make it a reality. We believe this will be marked as one of the building blocks in research and development history of Mongolia and the world.
With today's growing interest in space activities, we are anticipating to shed light on the following thought-provoking questions. Why Mars? Why prepare the Mars generation? Why analog and training stations? What's Mongolia's role in the space era? And how can we leapfrog and step up the global value chain? The resemblance of Gobi to planet Mars. If you were able to grasp the answers to all these questions, we invite you to stand by our side in solving the world's common challenges of resource depletion and global warming for a sustainable development. This marks only the beginning. Will you join the combined global effort? With this, I hereby invite Mr. Amos Lambayer, the CEO of Mars Wave Project, to conclude and close the conference. Greetings to all, Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, the International Conference on Mankind's United Vision to Reach Mars is coming to successful close. In the case of Mongolia, join this effort, as you say, is a giant leap. The quickly look back at the topics discussed today, the number of benefits, the development of Mars exploration, development of space research and technologies bring to the furthering of science, economy, and the innovation that is integrated into everyday life is unprecedented. In this sense, the result from research and plans for Mars settlements, training for Mars explorations, express the need to realize our current situations of resources depletion, whether, whether it's water, food, and electricity set upon us on our very own planet. The topics of Mars expression is not only been discussed, but already been prepared for by the Mars generation, Alisa, Camille, Linda, these representatives of the upcoming era will revolutionize the world and the next. The Mongolian president has expressed Mongolia's ambitions and goals to unite under this mankind's ambition to progress the Mars generation, further policy making for Mars exploration and the development of sciences. The Mongolian state sees the importance to look towards the future. Mongolians have established the Mongolian Air Space, the Research and Science Station to rise side by side with the rest of the world, to use the united ambitions to create greatness, to solve the common issues around the globe, to give to the world the Mongolian know-how to survive in an environment with very limited resources to access the Gobi Desert's Mars-like futures and present it to the world. Together, we will bridge mankind's wish to reach Mars. Mars for everyone. Mars and Earth International Digital Conference, Mars V. Thank you everyone for staying with us. I hope 2021 will be a good year. And may our all New Year resolutions come true. So let's all thrive towards progress and... Mars for everyone! everyone. Happy New Year!